see if we're live. Usually this thing pops up over here. There it is. Okay, cool. And we'll have our little tally up here on who's visiting us. So may as well start it off. Namaste, everyone. My name is Greg Prescott from in5d.com, and I'm joined today by Carrie Sanders with Quirky Cosmo. Mm -hmm. And there's some really big events that are happening right now that we're going to be talking about. But first, I want to just, while people are filling in, I want to talk about a little about what's going on on the Schumann. As you can see, it's gotten a little crazy here. You know, earlier in the month, we had uh, around what, March 2nd, I believe, um, some incredible energies that came through. And then shortly afterwards, we saw those squiggly lines on the Schumann resonance. Mm -hmm. And then we saw the Schumann basically go horizontal right here. And then what we ended up seeing was this, what looks like a wave of energy, a literal wave. And I, I have an article on m5d.com about that that you can check out. <clears throat> now, um, also, uh, what I would like you guys to do while you're filing in here is in the comment section, tell us where you're from. That way you guys can create family in your area from where, wherever you are. So uh, if you see somebody that's from your area or kind of nearby, send them a friend request because we're all family and we're all hooking up together. Uh, one other thing, too, is because what we've been seeing with Facebook, uh, they recently did a data dump uh, on what was called a life log. Life log was a program that they had before Facebook and it ended on, I believe February 4th of 2004, something like that. The day it ended was when Facebook started. So they ended the program, but basically it's, it's all run by DARPA. It's a CIA thing and everything we put on here is being recorded. So what happened yesterday mm -hmm. was everyone had a hard time posting and that's when Carrie called me. I knew if anybody knew what was going on with the systems, it would be Greg. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And Carrie called me and we had this incredible conversation last night. I'm like, we need to get this recorded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then this morning I was like flooded with like, connecting puzzle pieces or connecting the dots. And I was like, I gotta call Greg. So, and that brings us to where we are right now. But first I want to make sure that because of what is happening on some of these social networking places that you make sure that you subscribe to N5D and Quirky Cosmos. Quirky Cosmo. Cosmo, singular. Cosmo, yeah. It's quirky, because I'm quirky, okay? Unique, individual, strange, authentic. <laughs> yeah. And I was a former cosmetologist, and now I deal with the stars. So, mm -hmm. Cosmo! Perfect. So, make sure that you do subscribe, and that way, if these social networks do go down, you'll be able to stay in contact with right. us. So, um, right. I know on N5D, you can subscribe to either the daily or the weekly uh, newsletter. So, And I'm building my newsletter. So, I actually just put my post out this morning. I was trying to do it yesterday. Yeah, that didn't happen, but I did put out it this morning. So I am cre generating a new email list, and it's the first people that are on this, the first letter that goes out is a 30% off of my Cosmic Blueprints, which is phenomenal for people that like to have a path way through their ascension and knowing their DNA. This gives you three types of you human design. You're getting Jinky and your my intuitive astrology, and it's a one-on-one 90-minute -on -one, session um, on you, it's a video session that we go over your chart. So if you're interested in that and being on my email list, go ahead and drop me an email at quirkycosmo at gmail.com and I'll be happy to add you to it. And a quick shout out to everyone that's watching this on the recorded version on YouTube, on, on N5D YouTube, uh, as well as you have a YouTube channel. I do, Quirky Cosmo on YouTube. Okay, and what I'll do is on YouTube, I'll leave a link and the more info area below this and on Facebook, I'll leave a link right here too. So when we get done. And I see a couple of my, my friends here on the chat. So I just want to say thank you for joining very much. I see you out there. <laughs> the screen keeps freezing up. Because of our energy. I We're electric. I know. So we better get into it then. I know, right? Ooh. Where would you like to begin? Well, I think going I'm going to be reading out of the book a little bit because this is hot and fresh off the press. I'm not even kidding. All these 
things just came to me this morning. So I'm going to be reading a little bit out of my book for keynotes, okay? But I will. I do want to go over um, a couple of things, like okay. the. I don't know, I look at you. Know, but the um, the the seven sacred bodies of humanity. So we have well, there's more than seven, but we have the seven basic um, bodies. So I'm going to go over them and what that means. So you have three lower bodies, and then you have a bridge, which is the fourth body, and then you have the higher, the upper three body, the upper three bodies. Okay. So I'm going to go and talk about the the bodies. So the first body is physical body. Second body is your astral body, which is also your emotional body. And then you have your third body, which is the mental body. The fourth body is called the casual body, which is also the soul. It's the bridge. Okay, your soul is the bridge between the lower and the higher realms. And then the fifth body is the buddhic body. The sixth body is the atomic. It's A-T-M-I-C, atomic body, and the monadic body. So understanding that these seven basic bodies is, is going to be key here, okay? Because we're transcending not only as individual, right? We're transcending as a planet as well. And which body are we in right now? We're, well, I mean, we're in all of the bodies. We have them all. Okay. So, but what we're, what I'm going to be talking about is the fourth, sorry, I will stop that, <laughs> <laughs> is the transcending the the fourth body, which is the casual, your soul, right. transcending the soul, and the buddhic, which is the higher mental plane. It's the higher mental plane of your soul. Okay. So it's like the soul's consciousness. And fusing them, that's what we're going through, is a, is a soul, higher consciousness fusion. Okay. In the DNA. Bring yeah. It Bring yes. It okay, so as far as what we're going to be experiencing within the DNA, I'm going to give a little backstory here. We just, we've been going through, as, as the planets have been going around, this has a lot to do with planet, planets and alignments, okay? That's how we really transcend our energy. So all the planets are inside of us. It's just we see them as projections through the mirror ne neurons that are created in the brain. And as we know that if you've ever seen the images of what the neurons look like in a brain, it looks exactly like a galaxy. It looks like a galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> so with the, the planetary alignments, we have, for right now, we have Pluto at 22 degrees of Capricorn, which is, tr Pluto re represents the transformation, okay? So it's, you can also consider it like a tower, it goes in there and it like burns everything down just so that it soils and rebuilds, restructured. And it's in Capricorn, which is, Capricorn represents structures, government, all foundations, okay? And um, we also have that Pluto in a conjunction with the south node in Capricorn and Saturn in Capricorn. And conjunction means when the energies merge together to make one. So you have south node and Pluto and Saturn. Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. So we're going through and we're completely obliviating all of these structures, foundations, and governmental agencies, quintessentially. So Pluto, Pluto is known as the destroyer, and I've written a lot about this. Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, stays there until 2023. We were already over the apex, and what I've been writing about for years on this is that Pluto's going to be tearing down everything that's not in humanity's best interest, money, government, religion. It's going, and we we're, all, we're already seeing the collapse of all three of those. Um, the last time that Pluto was in Capricorn was during the 1700s, during both the French and American revolutions. And what's going on right now? We're having a silent revolution mm -hmm. here in the United States via QAnon. And in France, they're going through a revolution right now as well. This is happening. It's cyclical. But what we're doing this time around is a little bit different than what's going to be happening any other time beforehand because we're transcending and moving beyond. Well, this is also happening. What you can consider silent is within the body. So the Capricorn being the body, um, or it is, so it's your bones and your structure. So what you're seeing is all of the memory, because you have your Akashic memory, is held in the bones. So you, whenever you... Whenever you go and you come out of you reincarnate, you're forgiven of all sins. They don't, they don't, you don't 
come back and have the karma from a past life. That's a misbelief. It's a misconcept. It actually goes into the collective, so the collective energy. So in the matrixes around Earth, so her earthly bodies or her or Gaia astral body, the emotional body of Gaia. So what we're clearing out is the emotional body of Gaia, and we're clearing out the old structures of fear, anything that was created of fear. Now, we went into this as a collective knowing what was going to happen, regardless if people want to believe that religion was horrible and this and that and the other. It was, it was all part of the, the big plan. Humanity didn't know evil, didn't know lies, didn't know the polarity experience that we had over the last 2000 years. So as a species or multiple species, star seeds that were incarnating and other, you know, other alien races that incarnate on this planet to grow an evolution in their own consciousness as a soul from consciousness, spark of consciousness. We decided collectively along with Gaia to experience the, the harshest of duality. And so that's whenever we had, um, the inflammation or the implant or arconic um, development of religion. So religion is man-made. So it was created for man to grow, just letting you know that. So now we're in a, in an, we're part of, we're still going through the evolution and now we're re releasing all of these old ways that have been stuck in our, our, our bones within the ancestors, past and future. And you're going to see through what Carrie's talking about how this is being played out throughout the Bible, beginning with the age of Taurus. Right. Yes. Yeah. And for those that are just joining right now, I'm obviously I'm, I'm Greg from N5D.com and I'm being joined by Carrie Ann Sanders nice from Corky Cosmo, <laughs> not Cosmos, Cosmo.com. And for everyone watching right now, please like and share, share yes. this, get this information out because we haven't even gotten into the meat of the conversation yet so uh let's continue yes and um so what's what's happening what's been leading up like i said the planetary alignments are here and what we what i use is a it's a tool called gene keys it is derived from human design and from the ancient i ching along with planetary alignments um or planetary positions planetary energies however you want to phrase that okay so what happened is we we've gone through quite a few um uh, evolutions within within the human consciousness and we see this rise in consciousness with Uranus Uranus is the represented by Aquarius the water bear pouring consciousness into humanity so we're, we're being flooded with information and you could see that in the last 70 years since the 1950s whenever Uranus was in Taurus Taurus is the incognito sign of the earth it represents the earth it's it's used in some forms of astrology and others not but it is also um planetary planetary ruler is venus but it's earth so we see these earth which because you know taurus is a fixed earth sign we see these transitions in consciousness which is the coming of technology and you've seen that rise in technology over the last 70 years um and con know. well it's probably been longer than that but there's an exponential curve that goes in on with this and that's it's the same thing is going on with consciousness as we see this rise in technology same thing is happening with consciousness now getting just back to what you were saying aquarius a lot of people believe that think that because aquarius is the water bearer it's water sign but it's not no, it's an air sign an air sign and as we are in my opinion already moving into the age of Aquarius, um, with that being an air sign, it's to me the aethers um, that are being being brought in. It is. So yes, Aquarius is an air sign. It is rich. It's rich in communication and deep communication. It's an emotional communication. It is. Um, it's going to the depths, the souls of all of the the whole collective of of the universe. Okay, of this universe. It's the God of this universe. Okay, if you really want to look at it like that. Um, but yeah, so, and it's moved in back, it's at zero degrees of Taurus right now. So you're seeing another rise in consciousness, which is going to be not AI. It's not AI. This is a fixed earth. This is not going to be AI. This is the intelligence that I am. I am intelligent. I am connected. And so this is where this is going. Okay. So with the activations that we've been seeing within the gene key system, which is a part of the human design, the ancient I Ching, we're being, 
being activated, our, our codons within our body. So it's the amino acid, the structure, proteins, and all that that build up the um, human genome. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we're having a raise in our consciousness. And we are, in my opinion, as well, in the age of Aquarius. We're in the precipice. And so what's happening with the gene keys? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and evidence of that is that we're basically in the fourth dimension as thoughts are manifesting quicker than ever before. And that, that's your proof. If you wanted to know, you know, where are we? Have we actually exited the age of Pisces and gone into the age of Aquarius? In my opinion, yeah, we're already there as thoughts are manifesting quicker and quicker. And what you're going to see is another quickening, but I, I'll leave that to Carrie to talk about. And more to that, though, is also if you want to look at Taurus, Taurus is a fixed Earth. Again, it's the Earth sign. It represents Earth. So with Uranus being zero degrees of Earth, and it's already been here, it was here in 2018, and then went retrograde, just means it slowed down, and now it's fully integrated into the sign of Taurus at zero degrees, so that again is the Aquarius is here. We have landed, we're solid, and we're moving forward. <laughs> right on. Okay, so with the, G the Gene Key DNA activations, we, last week, the Sun activated Gene Key 22, Master number 22. It's also, well, I won't go into that. So we activated Jinky 22. <laughs> and Jinky 22 is grace. It's the city level, the highest frequency of grace within your DNA. So what you would have noticed is a bunch of emotions coming. I mean, and we can all experience a lot of emotions, and it's kind of blase to say that, but you're having a lot of emotional, like, things that come up from within your bones. Purging, depth. clearing, cleansing. Yes. I mean, I was going to yoga, and I went to yin yoga. I've been doing yin yoga and just finding myself in utter tears and with experiences that are crying and having experiences in Shavasana that didn't even resonate to this lifetime. So I know that I was pulling it because your hips don't lie. They cry because that's where all your memory stored is in the bones and in the hips and in the fascia. So as I'm learning this in yoga. <laughs> But in this 22nd Gene Key, it's activating grace. Grace within the, the teachings of Gene Keys speaks on the evolution of humanity through the, the, planetary, the planetary ascension and through the body. So not just Gaia's body, but our bodies as well. That's why I wanted to talk my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wanted to talk about the seven sacred bodies of humanity, okay? And there, the book also teaches about um, karma. It's where I learned that karma doesn't, it isn't carried on, and your personal karma isn't carried on. So that's more of like fictitious. It's a belief. It's whatever you believe. How about that? And you're going to see how this all ties in right. to what's going on right now. Right now. So with, I'm getting to this. Sorry, I had to get to my pages. All right. And then we have nine portals of planetary initiation. We've already gone through for we're in the fifth initiation so I'm Mid, midpoint halfway we're in the there midpoint but that marks the quickening the quickening yes. <laughs> yes. i'm super excited because of all the the bells and whistles that went off in my head today okay <laughs> all right the nine portals of planetary ascent of initiation i'm going to read out of the book are a synthesis of initiation rites of many different cultures and lineages Okay, the, I'm going to name off the nine initiations. First is birth, baptism, and you're going to, this comes from the teachings of the Corpus Christi, which is a mystic teaching. Um, if so, the first is birth, second is baptism, third is confirmation, fourth is matrimony, so marrying the, mascul the masculine and the feminine energies within, and it takes time to integrate that. And you can actually see the integration of the feminine energies and the masculine energies within the last, since the 60s whenever we had the rise in human uh, female rights. Okay, so that is the marrying of the energies here on the planet within, and within the structure, the social structures of our, of our society and within the self. Okay, and then the fifth is the identification, and the sixth is communion, the seventh is ordination, the eighth is sanctification, and ninth is glorification. Okay, this is where it gets juicy. As my yoga Listen. instructor likes to say, get in there and get juicy. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and if you are local in the area or you're going to come down and visit Sarasota, I highly re recommend going to Rosemary Court Yoga and 
the instructor there that I go to is Stephanie. She's a magic worker. I'm just saying shout out and come and visit and do some stretches and get those tears out. Okay. All right. So we've already seen the birth of the consciousness and humanity, the rise and all that. I'm going to skip to where we're at. We're actually experienced. We went to the fourth. We've already had the fourth, the integration of the masculine and the feminine, which is also part of the seven hermetic teachings, masculine and feminine. All right. I'm going to read out of the book. And here is my giant encyclopedia. Hold notes and <laughs> little page markers. And I got like everything. And even sharp if the highlighters fall out. All right. So the fish, fifth initiation flows naturally from the fourth. And at this level of it, expanded awareness the initiations often follow each other in relatively quick succession that is within a single lifetime boom so what it's saying right here is that once we've experienced the matrimony and the integration of the masculine and the feminine we will start ex and we come into the fifth enunciation that we're going to once once we have gone into this enunciation we're going to be experiencing the, the other um states of initiation at a rapid pace so would that explain how a lot of people are feeling like time is speeding up yes absolutely okay your consciousness whenever your consciousness is yes. raising you're all automatically elevating your mind body and soul so your 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 lower dimension your lower bodies into your higher bodies and so it's creating this fluid rush of consciousness throughout your entire body, which can cause all your shadow lineage and in this lifetime shadow. So your karma really come up or your wounding come to the surface. And people that have actually done the shadow work are the ones that are really ex going to be experiencing this purification at its heightened. Okay, I just heightened whatever you else want to put at the end of that one. So Ian Lungold talked about this also. He said the, the time speeding up phenomenon, he said that time isn't speeding up, but our consciousness is speeding up. And that's exactly what we were talking about. We saw the exponential rise of technology coinciding with the exponential rise in consciousness. And that's why if, if, if a lot of you are feeling that time is speeding up, that helps to explain it. And Carrie will go further into this about how and why. What, right, because within the with once you get to that your soul level and you integrate your soul, you're you're moving from the casual body, which it acts as a bridge between the lower realms or your physical, your three D body, your three D aspect of your avatar, and it integrates it to your your higher levels of consciousness, of the soul consciousness, and that and that the soul acts as that medium as a bridge. So and it's just funny enough we have Saturn and anyways then that that's a bridge as well. Lots of bridges, lots of bridges. I don't know. <laughs> I want to see that rainbow bridge. Yeah. I have a Care Bears. I, I was thinking about it. I was like, I should do this. I'm a care, I've got Care Bears tattooed on me, so I wonder if my belly will pop out and create a rainbow. <laughs> rainbow. All right. Moving into back to a quick succession that is within a single lifetime. So we will be experiencing, now that we're into the fifth initia uh, initiation, we will be experiencing the, the rest of the initiation. So like I was saying, I actually have to look at all this stuff while I do it. What do I do with it? Sorry. What did I do? Where did they go? It's like ragu. Sorry. It's in there. I know it's in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. It was on the finger where I had my finger. It's on the page where <laughs> I had my finger. Okay. So we'll be experiencing communion, ordination, sanctification, and glorification all within this lifetime. An average lifetime is 70 years right now as of like right now unless you've been like totally medicated your entire life Detox. that's not good i'm like 58. it's all a mindset too <laughs> it's a mindset as well just leave it at that okay so with the fifth initiation it says now that you are married to your higher consciousness the next thing that happens is that you become pregnant and anybody else been feeling that belly rise getting all bloated and indigestion yeah can i get some heart some love who else has been feeling this i've been feeling it I put on a little bit of weight. And we were talking about that earlier. Uh, after I got done as a speaker on the Waves of Light conference, I got back and I weighed myself. And I was 100 and, or 224 pounds, the most I've ever weighed in my life. This was back on January 22nd, 22 Gene Key. 22. But uh, 
since then, in like a month and a half, I've lost 24 pounds. I'm down to 200 right now. And at 5'11", it's, you know, I still have a little bit more to go, but I'm losing the weight. And it, it, all this is tying into everything yeah. about the purging. And Greg's giving birth to his new life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting rid of it. It's, it's coming it's out. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, what it says is that you become pregnant. This is the inanication. The mystical announcement of the imminent birth of the Christ, Christ consciousness. In order to birth a new life, a new you, right? We have to let go of our past life, our, our emotional attachments, our codependencies, right? And so when we release that, it's releasing from the astral body, which is your emotional body. And to integrate your soul, right? integrate that soul you have to make space in that astral in your astral body so that it can come in and that it can have a place to 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 connect to the buddhic state of body it's not state buddhic body all right the fifth initiation is feminine in origin flowing as it does from the third aspect of the sacred trinity the holy mother okay so with that being said what we also are going to be active what's going to be activated in on this full moon and super full moon, the third super full moon in Libra, in Libra, the divine feminine, justice, balance, beauty, relationships with yourself and others. Okay. So that is the, the sacred Trinity and the Holy mother, the lower plane. So what's going to be, sorry, what's going to be activating is gene key 25 and in opposition 46. So we'll have uh, the moon and the sun. So the moon's going to be activating zero degrees of Libra and the sun is going to be activating. <laughs> I love this too. Activating zero degrees of Aries, which represents Aries is the body and Libra is the spirit. Explain the importance of zero degrees in Libra. It's a, oh, so Libra is, uh, well, zero degrees in itself is critical. It can be zero degrees or it can be considered 30 degrees. Either way, however you want to look at it, it is a critical degree. And it represents wholeness, zero, binarial, binarial code, what is what our soft, software programs are made out of, hardware, all this is, is binarial codes, it's zeros and ones. So whenever you're coming into the zero, it's coming into a brand new code, a brand new creation. It's the egg, it's the whole of life. So, and then you also, so here you're having, you're having the first house of Aries and the seventh house of Libra. So, and they're right, they're right across from each other and they're activating. So you're having this um, divine feminine and the masculine and then the, the, the moon activating Libra, which the moon is representing the receiver, which would be the feminine moon is feminine and Aries is ruled by Mars. Mars is masculine and it's the sun that's illuminating. So the masculine charge. So it's the, it's the receiver and the, the giver and the receiver. What's interesting, too, and I was doing the numerology on this. Um, you said the first house in Aries and the seventh house in Libra. You also mentioned that we're going into the uh, 25th gene key, right, which mm -hmm. is a seven. seven. And what was the other one, 46? 46 is Which 10. is a one. Yeah, it's 10. So oh once God, you have the one and the seven. I didn't even put that together. Yeah, yeah it's, all, it's it. all aligning. It's aligning. Yes, it's so beautiful. Exactly. <laughs> Love that. See, more confirmation. It's the ones and sevens. Yeah. Love. I always see 17 too. Here's, you know, I'm like really a lucky, lucky, lucky guy. And he's got me here. He's pretty lucky. <laughs> and my name, uh, Greg, is with three G's, not two G's. G R E G G. G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. So I have 777 in my name. Want to go gamble? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Powerball, right? I know. That's what it literally fell out of one of my books. I was like, oh, I have a Powerball ticket. Didn't even uh -huh. realize. Sure. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. It's up to something right now, huh? It has to be it, something. I think it has to be something. <laughs> so dollar fifty. I don't know. We'll go and continue on the <laughs> un <laughs> the anonymation. on the lower planes. The feminine is expressed through the astral plane. Again, spirit, the casual body, the is the fourth body is the feminine, which is the bridge in between the the higher states, so your soul. And just throwing that out there. And, it, and the divine is expressed through the astral, through the emotion. That's why they say your intuition is that feminine aspect. It's connecting to source or Gaia or, you know, it's connecting to your soul. It's your intuition, which is divine. It's feminine. That's why it's been suppressed. So that, nurturing. It's, it's, and it's nurturing. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. 
So the desire nature and the emotions. That's the astral plane, the desire and the emotions. At this higher level, this plane re relates to the fifth or the Buddhic body. At the fifth initiation, the exquisite emanations and refined currents from the Buddhic body begin to penetrate the lower astral nature. So what that's stating is that you're, whenever you're cleared out of your astral, you cleared out your astral, right? All your lineage and the bloodline and everything that you have in your bones and the blood, you're, you're making space so that the Buddhic level, which is the, the third highest or the lowest of the higher planes, right? And so that way the casual body, your astral body can merge with the Buddhic body, the higher state of consciousness, mental consciousness. 5D. 5D. Oh, 5D. again. Yes. Love it. I'm telling you, all these pieces just came in together. We're not planning this. This was not set up. You should see how many books I brought. So. And this is what we're, <laughs> what we're talking about here too is 5D and beyond. And beyond. Yeah. yeah. This is moving us all the way to glorification. Mm -hmm. This is moving us into light body. Light body. Believe it or not. But you better believe it so you can get <laughs> Change your beliefs. All right. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> this is a deeply tantric phenomenon in which you experience the sublimination of your sexuality into pure spiritual essence. Now, as of the 13th of March, until the 19th of March, we, we are in the, I don't know, that was a 36, yeah. We're in the 36th, I was just about to go to my book, fell out my bookmarker. My bookmarker was a book. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to go into, we're in, not we're about, we are in the 36th gene key, which is called becoming human. So we went from the 22nd gene key, where we're doing all these initiations and we're clearing out and detoxing our blood and our bones and going through the nine, and we're, go, well, we're going through the fifth initiation of integration of the casual body. So clearing out the astral and moving into the buddhic body, which is a higher state of mental consciousness. And this is the apex, the fifth, and with an acceleration moving through the ninth, up, okay. up to the ninth. The whole key to this is moving forward mm -hmm. okay so with with what we're in right now in the 36 gene key what we're what the shadow because all these gene keys you're everybody at the lower level had well and they're not the lower level in their dna at a lower level these these um these codons have lower frequencies and that's what we've all really been living in are the lower frequencies the shadow okay shadows effect and then whenever you uh, move through the shadow or accept the shadow and love it for what it is and what it's teaching you It moves you to a gift frequency and that gift is what you resonate on a regular basis So whenever you see somebody that's going through their spiritual path, they're on their path or they're acting in a more balanced or harmonious manner It's because they're living at a gift frequency of, of the gene keys or the codons that they have I always say gene keys, of the codons that they have active within their person within their within their person Mm -hmm. Okay. It's interesting that you brought up codons too, if I may in yeah. interject, because recently on YouTube, I have a, a, a video. It's a one hour RNA, DNA, codon activation mantra, and there's ambient music playing in the background of that. And this is what I listen to every day when I go on my walk of gratitude on the beach. And uh, what I'm trying to do is activate all the beneficial codons in my RNA and DNA. And I'm going to be making a new video too that adds one last thing and to turn off any bad codons because what they found out in a recent study with, uh, I think it was some, some kind of tapeworm or something like that, some kind of worm, by actually shutting off one of the codons, it prolonged its life to like two or three times the length of what it normally would live. And not only that, but all of its offspring also had the same thing. So. I'll be incorporating that and I'll be putting a new video out of that mantra as well. So thank you for bringing up the codons. And that is pulled in through the RNA. So how you're receiving your ancient or lineage or how you're getting these specific uh, codons that are within your body are placed through the planets, but it's also through your, your lineage that's in the RNA. And I'll be putting a link for that here. Um, on the Facebook as well as on YouTube as well. And like I said, if you're just joining, make sure you're liking, 
and thumbing us up and sharing this with all your friends because this is really big information. It is. So along with the Gene Key 36, it, it has, it's part of a, each Gene Key is, has an opposite Gene Key. It's called a programming partner. And then within, within the Gene Key itself, it's part of a codon ring. There's a formation of multiple, uh, that can be two to six, and I think it's like two to six codons that make up a codon ring, okay? And that's a formation. So it would be a geometric shape, quintessentially, okay? On the quantum physics side of this. Maybe. That's interesting. I just want to throw this out there for people uh, listening right now, because I've heard about this in people's uh, dreams. They're saying that they're seeing a lot of geometric shapes and patterns in their dreams. I had this one dream one time. I'm sorry to... No, no, you're totally good. No, no. Flow. We're flowing. Baby. I know. We're flowing. I had this one dream one time where I saw this sacred geometry pattern coming out of the sky, and it lands on the beach, and there was a portal that I had to go through in order to figure out what it was. And intuitively, I thought that it had all the knowledge in the world. Everything I want, anything and everything you wanted to know was, was contained in that sacred geometry uh, image uh, that landed on the beach. But I had to go through this portal in order to obtain that knowledge. There's and the, the portal. Yeah, and the thing was, at that time in my dream, I didn't do it because my daughter was, I don't know, maybe 12 years old or something like that. And I thought if I go through the portal, I might not come back and see her again. So I stayed here for her. But had I realized, had I been able to lose a dream, I'd have gone through that portal in a heartbeat because I know that I could control whatever's happening and I could always come back. But you know, we're approaching that portal we right now. This is what we're this is where we're going with this. I'm giving you the backstory and what we're experiencing right now. Okay, so this is what I'm getting at. Um, so with the with the codon ring, the Gene Key 22 is uh, part of the codon ring of divinity, as is Gene Key 36, the one that we're in right now. So we have Gene Key 36 and tied to Gene Key 22. So this is kind of integrating everything that we just experienced the sun illuminating in jinky 22 we're integrating it now with becoming it, this is titled becoming human and the shadow frequency i was getting at a minute ago is turbulence so the last two days you might have been feeling like completely thrown the bleep off um and it was because you were having people mirror these experiences of the emotions that you just released and to make sure that you are loving through suffering, like you're loving yourself, not through suffering, you're loving yourself through all of your suffering because that's what becoming human is. This becoming human, a great image that you can give yourself is to think of Christ on the cross. Christ on the cross is a representation of I am God, but I am no better and no more than you. Here I stand as a man nailed to a cross bleeding the blood that comes from your veins that flows from mine and asking for mercy, compassion, and love from my God, my source. So it's saying that I, through my suffering, I still hold compassion for myself and for others. So it's loving yourself through all of the experiences and the emotional traumas that have come up in your life to be loved and to be released. And that's why a lot of people are going through purging right now. You're going through a lot of emotional us included. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, we're go going I'm through all no these different. <laughs> yeah, and we're going through all these um, emotional purgings. But what I once again, what I find really interesting, because I'm once again doing the numerology. You mentioned Gene Key 36, which is a nine, which is completion of this current third dimensional slash fourth dimensional reality. Here we go. And we're if you look at the galactic calendar, which I did not bring my galactic calendar. Okay, so, but we're in the ninth, we're in a solar moon, the solar tone moon, the gla if you look at the galactic calendar, anybody that has the 13 moons calendar, it's the Mayan, it's the galactic calendar, go also up the 13 moon cycle instead of this Gregorian shit, hey. time Saturnian. Gregorian. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> No, that I love the Mayan calendar and the idea of going by 13 moons, 13 months. And that's where we get actually get the name month, month. is from moon. And moon day. Moon day, exactly. And Sunday. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So anyways, wearing a vibrant shirt on Sunday is best. Saturn day. And Saturn day. 
Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Anyways. All right. So back to this, we're in the ninth moon. My whole point Focus. is that this, this, <laughs> the super moon, the third super moon of this new year, not really new, but Gregorianly yeah. new. It's the third. In zero degrees Libra. Zero degrees Libra, zero degrees Aries, masculine, feminine, complete total merge. Okay. Okay. The ninth moon, completion. This is the strongest moon out of the 13 moon cycles. All right. So the turbulent, the shadow aspect is turbulence and of the free, of the 36 gene key, what we're experiencing right now. And it moves you into humanity. So becoming human and ex experiencing life in this human body. I know there's a lot of us out there that are like, I'm an alien. I'm done with being here. Sorry, honey, you chose to come here. This is it. It's embodiment. You're human for right now. You're an avatar, your spiritual body or spiritual essence in an avatar. Know it, own it. But guess what? We are fusing the avatar with the soul on the fifth dimension. And it's going to be a light body. It is happening and it is happening now. <laughs> There's some tones for you. Um, okay, and then the, the highest frequency that you carry once you're fully integrated in the gift, which is just being human, accepting your suffering, accepting your pain, and going, okay, I have challenges, they're painful, I'm human, I'm here, this is it, when I go to bed, it's not painful, you know, unless you're like completely able to astral travel and you're just like, you know, feeling everything, which is not, whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, it's important to own it, acknowledge it, there but also go. to let it go too, go. you know, and don't mull on the past, these bad things that have happened, you know, just honor it, let it go, release, forgive, release with love and through forgiveness. And compassion. And compassion. Compassion. So this is compassion. So you can honestly say that the compassion is the energy that you're carrying with your Christ consciousness. It's your, it's like a support energy that you carry so i support people through compassion i don't have to support them financially i can support them emotionally through ha holding a level of compassion okay 36 jinky it's shadow title is in the the shadow is called turbulence but the title is called the dark night of the soul so that is kind of what you're that kind of it is what you're experiencing you're experiencing some more di dark nights of the soul in essence not everybody is going to be dredging it the exact same way, but you're going to have circumstances that pop out maybe with people. Okay. And there, I want to give the, there's two states that you can be in with this, with the shadow. It is reactive and repressive. The repressive nature is nervousness. And I'm going to name this out because this needs to be heard. Okay. When emotional turbulence is resisted, it becomes nervousness that ripples through one's entire body and aura. So you can be, like shaking and you can be having like anxiety and it is rippling through your body, like uh, whatever, or getting the shakes or like, you know, whenever you're angry, your hand just starts to gyrate. Yeah. Gyrate. <laughs> <laughs> and then your, 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 it, it emanates throughout your aura. Okay. So this clearing of your aura, this dark night of the soul is really helping clear out your aura, but the repressive, the repressive state of the shadow is is resist is resisting this turbulence and that's what's coming up and the reactive is crisis prone so when emotional turbulence is expressed without clarity or honesty whenever we're just trying to bypass or spiritually bypass your your shadows your wounds that you carry and don't judge yourself we all have shit okay it results in repetitive, destruct destructive emotional situations. These are people who live lives, whose lives run like a soap opera, like a telenovela is what I always say. So that's like basically not learning from your past mistakes. When you see these repetitive patterns occurring in your life time and time and time again, learn from it or else they're going to keep coming back until you finally are able to overcome those obstacles. And the reason why I'm having uh, talking about this online with everything else that's going on that I'm going to be talking about is because it's really important for you to get to the state of a uh, nunication and to integrate your soul through the, and, and or the casual body and the buddhic body, you have to have a clear astral body. And so right now what's happening is we're experiencing the sun. So you're getting like four days or five days, almost four and a half days of the sun illuminating these aspects, these, these, these 
shadows still that are resonant in your astral body and your emotional body. So it's really important that you're you're really sitting down and doing shadow work. If you have things that are planned back, 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 and you're going to be completely swamped, do yourself a favor for the long run and take time. Yes. And now more than ever, too, ground. Make sure ground. you get out there and ground because I'm seeing people glitching out left and right. Wrote an article That's about true. that as well. Yeah. You know, if you're not getting out there and grounding, you're not going to – you're going to start losing it as well. So it's really, really important more than anything. Now more than ever, get out there and ground. So if you're finding yourself eating like root foods, um, potatoes, potatoes. <laughs> I've been eating a ton of potatoes, a little bit more than normal. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I honor, I live an intuitive life. Maybe you'll sprout a third eye like a potato. I already have got that now. Maybe it's freckled. I came on in 5D year, we do this like yearly. <laughs> where Greg brought up, I was like, oh, really? So I noticed that, like, why I, doesn't matter, I don't want to go, anyways, I used to, I, I still do, I used to still do, I see fractals, and it looks like little specks of light dust and, and geometric shapes, and I would talk about this, and I'd get the crazy ads, like, she's lost her shit, <laughs> and I was like, maybe I did, but, there is. right, there's my shit, <laughs> I've done my shit, it's my confidence. Mm -hmm. And so you're, whenever you are in this higher states of, of, of frequency and you're vibrating at higher states of frequency, you can blip out. And you, so eating these, these grounded foods will help you stay grounded. Also, you know, meditating, earthing, grounding, whatever you want to call it, with your shoes off, all that. So finding time for yourself and integrating this. That's easier said than done. We're right. in Florida, and it's like 80 degrees outside, oh, but I know there's a lot of people that are out there that have, you know, they're, they're, they're in northern temperatures, and there's snow on the ground and all that good stuff. What I recommend for them to do is to grab, like, a good earth stone, um, some obsidian or black tourmaline, uh, and just hold that in your hand and connect that way. Are there any other ways that you can think yeah. of for people that are in colder climates to ground? Well, there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, for one, you can grab some sand or you can get some earth and you can just bring it into your house. Maybe um, you have like a, a pot or plant, a house plant. You can bring it into the house. It helps you to ground. So staying within the area where your house plants are at, you can bring in herb. I have a ton of herbs and stuff that I do my ceremonies with. So you can sprinkle the herbs around wherever you're going to be sitting, um, having fresh flowers around. Also, um, I find grounding to just do some deep breathing. Um, there's the Wim Ho yeah. breathing. Yeah. So if you're in the northern areas, maybe that'll give you a chance to practice. Wim Ho, if you don't know, he's a, he is an amazing man, uh, but he's also known as the guy that can you know, sit on in the freezing cold, butt naked, and change his complete body temperature just using his breathing technique. So mm -hmm. if you want to look that up, go on Google. Go Google it up, Wim Ho breathing. How do you spell that? Oh, okay. W I M H O. Don't quote me. You'll Google it. You'll find it. You'll it's figure H -O -F, it out. H O F. I'm not sure. I think H O. Yeah, I, I don't know. Don't yeah, quote I'm me not on sure. it. Um, okay, so that's what I wanted to get into. And oh, it's so the gift of humanity is titled the the spirit descending. When your struggles with, and then another thing with this is your sexual power. So you're taking your power with this jinky. You're learning through through um, suffering, pain, but you're also learning your power, your strength. That really goes into that breathing technique too. Um, and being in the cold weather and owning your power, oh, mind over matter. Okay, so your sexual, your sexuality and your emotional turbulence um, is, is really what this shadow gift, it, the shadow is. And it brings you um, to, once you become honest and clear with yourself with what your shadows are and not hiding from them and you own your power and your creativity, then it moves you into the gift of humanity. Okay. And the spirit descends into the body. So it's, it's merging again with that higher, the higher mental state, the conscious state, the buddhic state. Okay, so where this is going, 36 Gene Key goes all the way from the 13th of March until the 19th of March, and then the 20th we have our spring, spring equinox, equinox, equinox mm -hmm. and the super the third super full moon of the year, zero degrees Libra, conjunct, I mean opposition of zero degrees in Aries. So we have all of that going on. That brings us the fifth initiation, what we're going through, and this is the purification. So I'm going to go back to reading about the the anedication. So this 
is where we picked up. The anenication is a chemical phenomenon that saturates your whole being just as a woman during pregnancy is flooded with hormones. So you become aware that your body is being purified and cleansed in preparation for a great inner event. Inner event. So, you know, I, I was talking to Carrie about this earlier because a lot of us have had that vision of this white light flood, flooding the planet and all you feel is that unconditional love to a magnitude that you can't put into words. For me, the only way I can describe it to the best I can is that, you know, to imagine the one thing or person that you love the most it's my daughter, multiply that by a million times, and that's the kind of love you're gonna feel when this happens. All third dimensional worries are gone. You don't care if your boss is an asshole, money, government, religion, none of that stuff matters anymore. Um, so, you're creating your own reality at yeah, this point. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's the, the great inner event, the birth of Christ consciousness. So like I was saying, so we're merging, right? We're, learn we're merging. We're going through this great purification, the masculine and the feminine. We're, we're merged those, and now we're going through a purification. And this brings you through the higher, st the, the inner great event, the white light is white light represents consciousness being that's what that's what source is if you don't know look pure at the source energy pure, pure source energy is the white light so pure christ consciousness is what we're going to be experiencing and so when you can really see this happening so we're going to be having the purification time during the full we're having it now we're leading up to this okay during the full moon in libra and the following few months but come april 2nd April 2nd, we have Neptune. Neptune takes 150 years to go around, okay, and come to this placement. From April 2nd, 2019, till March 1st, 2022, we're going to be having Neptune activating grace, Gene Key 22. So this is gonna be the great purification for the collective. Now, being an awakened being, starseed, light worker, uh, way shower, whatever title you know you run by, you're going to be experiencing this initially. Okay, so you're not to say that the collective conscious, the the collective isn't feeling it. They definitely feel it, but they're not aware what's happening. You're awake and you're aware. So that makes a difference. And with this reality, this duality, this polarity that we live in, this universe that we are in. Or this this world that we're in dimension whatever plane whatever you want to call it okay we're experiencing um we're going to be experiencing this first that's because they have to see it to believe it just as jesus christ buddha um shiva all of these people of the past whatever mythical experience mythical people mythology where they had to they had to be the example so that humanity can see that they can do it too. So that's what we're, why we're gonna be going through this first. So this really ties into an article that I'll be publishing later on in the, in the month. I've got so many awesome articles scheduled right now, but it's uh, it's by Bill Donahue. And it's and with Neptune. It yeah. has to do with Neptune. So Neptune, if you don't know, is known as Poseidon in Roman Greek mythology, mm -hmm. or Roman mythology. Mm -hmm. And let's see. This is great. His information was great. Yeah, and what Bill Donahue does is he looks at everything in, in the Bible, basically it's allegory and metaphor, and he makes sense out of it all for us. So what he was saying that in Revelation 19.11, it talks about a white horse um, coming in, and according to Bill Donahue, he said that Pegasus um, would be the white horse, and Pegasus' father was Poseidon, the god of the sea. Uh, Pegasus was white, making Pegasus a white seahorse. Here's where it gets interesting. The seahorse is connected to memory. And recently, there was a new planet discovered outside of Neptune within our own solar system. And it's been hiding in plain sight. It was a new moon, excuse me, a, a new moon of Neptune, and the new moon is called Hippocamp. Short now, for Hippocampus. Short for Hippocampus. Now, what is the Hippocampus? Hippocampus is where we contain it, where we hold our, our memory. Mm -hmm. And how does this all tie into Neptune? 
So as Neptune is, it, it's obliviator. So it goes in and, and it raises consciousness. Um, I haven't actually written down right here. I have a little bit of things I wrote. Oh. So Neptune comes in, it transcends consciousness the, in the, and the physical, and the Neptune itself escapes the ordinary bounds of, of, of phys physics, physics. So what, it's what Neptune does is it elevates your consciousness. It elevates you beyond physics, beyond, it, it, what, I can, what I, I would say would be like dark matter. So it goes in and it raises that consciousness. Are you not okay with that one? No, no, no. Okay. No, it's, it's, it's no coincidence, though, that this new moon was just, hap just happened to be discovered at this point in time and how it all ties into everything that Terry's talking about. And so Neptune gives you, like, mystical experiences, what you can consider daydreams, illusions. But they're very – people that are ruled – or Neptune rules Pisces. So, again, we're in Pisces here. So this is – elevating your your consciousness and it's bringing you out of the mundane and it's taking it, it it is allowing mystical experiences to happen people typically take dmt shrooms uh even pot you know just to elevate you know to have a higher or have a mystical experience um it brings you more of a gamma okay a gamma state consciousness it's non-limit it's no limit so a lot, there's no, no coincidence with Neptune going into the 22nd gene key. It's going to allot for a mystical experience. It goes against all physics. So this is, you know, anyways, that's why Pisces, and another thing with Pisces, Pisces is the divine in, in spirit, it's the divine spirit and body. That's why a lot of Pisceans are very psychic, intuitive, and just naturally connected to the divine itself. They are the divine. Well, we all are to the divine, but they're extremely freaking connected. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that and everything that he talked about with um, with um, the Poseidon. Poseidon and Neptune and talking about the white horse, again, a representation of that white horse is serious. So Grace, Jinky 22, represents Sirius, the star system Sirius, which is a bright white light. There are seven sisters that are said, sacred sisters that are said to watch over this, this universe, this planet. And Sirius is the center. It is the hub. And it's also Gene Key 22 <laughs> is Sirius. So again, with that white light and activation, I literally just did this activation on, the, on my channel for Gene Key 22. So if you wanted to check that out and get the initiation, it, it's an invocation with light language um, to activate and connect with the star system Sirius, then you can go to my channel and, and go ahead and click on Gene Key 22. All right. With this, going back to the inedication, and the, this is all about integration, okay? How and how quickly this happens it depends on your how much work you've done and I'm, it's not work but it's how much time you've taken to love yourself and understand what's happening through you not to you through you you are a conduit on this planet you are here to transcend the lower frequencies and elevate them to a loving frequency of unity consciousness and that's where we're going so but what's giving way is that Neptune on April 2nd is moving into Gene Key 22. So we're, we got a taste of it from the sun and now we're gonna have two and a half years of it with Neptune. And so is this gonna affect like people's dreams? Will, will yes. their dreams become oh much God, more yes. vivid and prophetic? Oh my God, yes. Sweet. Yeah, this is, this is gonna be an embodiment of your, of your, of your soul in, in body, like your spirit in the body. This is you not only merging your, your masculine, your feminine within, but it is merging your higher self into the avatar. And for those of us that are able to tap into our third eye, will that become even more intense as we well? We say tapping into the third eye. You're going to be fully living from AIDS. My, my perspective of third eye may differ from others. Um, my third eye is more of a connected to my intuition, and I see a lot through my my two my, my my projectors i see through my projectors i see the fractals and geometric shapes through that and when i close these eyes i mean that you know it's your third eye it's your imagination it's tapping into your imagination within and without 
So it is limitless. It's tapping into all these realms, right? And so, yes, you will be living more out of your intuition or your third eye and be able to project that in, in your imagination and create larger manifestations and visualize these manifestations in the waking state. Cool. That's the mystical experiences of Neptune. That's daydreaming. Right, bringing daydreams to life. To, to life, right? Yeah. Manifesting this. Yeah, yeah. So, and here we go. The connection between the, this is the the initiation of the anunciation is also the connection between the throat center and the sexual center. Also becomes clear during the initiation when a person spontaneously enters a higher ecstatic state that appears to be ongoing. It is a fair assumption that they are entering this fourth portal of an education. Many different mystical traditions speak of this magical time of higher pregnancy in which the immortal fetus is fetus is gestating inside our solar plexus center. It is one of the great enduring mysteries of creation. So I, I have a quick question here from okay. Cynthia Kablentz. She says, do you feel most will have a different experience in the happening or a collective whole energetic shift of the same frequency the collective the the collective isn't really going to be experiencing they're going to be experiencing this um for two and a half years really bringing all this up and we are too but we'll have it at a different essence because we've already been on our path and we've integrated so much of our our and activated so much of our dna it's really based on an individual level what you're going to be experiencing it and what you signed up to experience because you can we're not all experiencing the exact same realities we're in different dimensions at or different planes of existence or realities at any given state in time until you merge together. So it's really about what emotionally you are projecting into your reality. So our, our friend, uh, Rosie Neal, um, yeah, was yeah. one of the people that got you to come yeah. to Florida. <laughs> um, Thank you. She, uh, she recently wrote an article about this saying that how Rosie. what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to have their own experiences going through this. Mm -hmm. There might be times where people just fade out of your life and you're going to be going through your own experience. That's because they, they're, they're, they're not projecting the same reality that you are and that is okay. Yeah. And what's going to happen is while you're projecting your own experience, you're also going to be aligning vibrationally with those who are also aligned with you. It's not like you're going to be alone through this, even though it's an individual experience, you're still going to be, vibrating at that level with other people. So you might find that your tribes are coming together quicker and faster right now. Absolutely will be seeing that your tribes are coming together faster. So the reason that we're all experiencing this now and are being awakened, we're aligning. we're aligning with our with our soul families. We have been aligning with our soul families, but this is we're coming into a time in Revelations by St. John or St. Thomas. Okay. Anyway. Thomas. Uh, I think Thomas. Thomas. I think it's St. Thomas. It's both Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, what we're what we're doing is we're we're seeing the white horse. What the white horse in representation is Neptune coming in coming in and activating this gene this this DNA within our bodies. That's transcending. So um, what the hell was I talking about? I just lost it all. I just got mind swiped. It's gone. So. Uh, we're talking about the collective consciousness. Oh yeah, consciousness. collective consciousness versus the individual. Versus the individual. Versus the individual. We have to be the ones that are leading by example. So we will be experiencing this before the mass collective, and you're going to see people that are start trickling in, that start trickling in, now one by one they start coming in, and that's because they're raising in their frequency, they're owning, which is easier for them because we've done so much work on a collective level, clearing the collective energy clearing the collective uh, or Gaia astral realm where all of these, where all the past karma is actually collected, where we're transcending that energy so that the people that are going through this process are having an easier time because they're not having to clear out the collective as we have. So we've been clearing us and Gaia. Sweet. Um, here's a comment from Miyashinu, uh, who's also one of our writers on N5D. Uh, he said that I've been remembering dreams for a while now, and usually it's been like one night, one a night. 
This last week, I've been having several real vivid dreams every night. They've just felt so real and really feeling physical sensations in the dream too. So I've, I've noticed that too. A lot of people nowadays, um, they're, they're saying the same thing, that their dreams are becoming more and more vivid. And I know that some people have a hard time remembering. If you're one of those people, just simply ask your guides, you know, your posse. For me, my posse, posse is creator, source, universe, spirit guides, guardian angels, friends and family on both sides of the veil, galactic neighbors, friends, higher self, mother earth. Ask for the help. According to Sonia Chiquette, she says that if you have a little lemon water before you go to bed, and maybe that's when you want to make that intention uh, to remember your dreams, do that too. But I know that myself, my dreams have always been vivid, so I don't really see much of a difference. But I've been hearing a lot from other people that they're having more and more vivid dreams right now. That's because we're in Pisces season. Okay. So, and that Pisces, it, like it's the daydreams, illusions, delusions, mm. and mystical experiences. So Pisces enables us to have that direct connection with, with the divine. Okay. Um, no obstacles in the way there. Um, but if you're not experiencing your dreams, I don't, I go, I'm out. Like, I don't remember them. I don't care either. Um, it's not, if I was supposed to know it, then I wake up knowing it. I don't hold I don't care if I don't, because if I don't, then, I mean, I go and I, I, I get people that will write me like you were in my, you were, you were clearing me, you were healing me. That's great. That's what my soul's doing. That's my avatar is asleep. And I mean, if you want to know what your soul is doing, then yes, like Greg said, go ahead and set the intention. Anything that you want to have experienced the next day, say it before you go to bed. Say, I want to see a woman with red sunglasses. The next day you'll see a woman with red sunglasses. <laughs> You really will. That's how you start creating your reality is to set yourself up for success the night before. So I get, I get, I have prophetic dreams and I, I just saw an article recently. They said that only 20 to 30% of the people, the entire population have prophetic dreams. But if you're one of those people, make sure that you write them down, yes. put it out there, let people know, tell me about it, write an article around it, you know, and let me know if it's positive. I don't want to hear a dream about some apocalypse but <laughs> and everybody's individual like i when i had because i i i see the many possibilities of the future and you know i have prophetic insights but i don't have to it's not my coming from my sleep i will literally be in my waking state in this avatar and i will i'll have it i'll see it i'll yeah. get a vision of it everybody's different in how we are you might want to look at your human design as well so your your how your energy flows within your body and your, the channels are meridians. You want to look at how you, you know how are you as a as an individual inner, or energetic being? How are you set up to run in this matrix, this holographic matrix that we're in? We're all energy, and so that really plays into it as well. And time and practice, mm -hmm. newbie, seasoned. <laughs> and that's the thing too. You know, sometimes I get I, I get the prophetic dreams, and sometimes it's with the third eye, like the recent one I saw with, of those concentric rings of plasma that are coming right. from the sun right now right now right now and we had uh photo evidence of people that were you'd see the sun behind them and these concentric rings I coming out them. from behind them. yeah it's amazing um then people are posting pictures of the sun where you can see the concentric rings coming out right now but i saw that and within a few days after i had that vision rosie neal contacted me she gave me a call and uh you know, she had the same vision too, and we're putting that out there. So when you have these dreams and prophetic uh, visions, make sure you're putting it out there. So to, I'm gonna wrap this up here. The um, when a person spontaneously enters into a higher aesthetic state that appears to be ongoing, it is a fair assumption that they are entering the fifth portal of an evocation. Many different mystical traditions speak of this magical time of higher pregnancy in which the immortal fetus is gestating inside the solar plexus center. We are evolving from our solar plexus into our heart center, just saying. Um, it is one of the great enduring mysteries of creation. Also, little do we realize that this form uh, is just stating inside our very DNA. The timeline for species to undergo any any initiation is obviously very different from the, an individual. And for humanity, it will, may take hundreds of years for the medication to become realized. We're there. We're definitely there. We are about to enter the time of great purification in which the feminine spirit of grace will be working actively in the world. And that is what we are going to be experiencing. This, this full moon is the 
initiation of the divine feminine working in the world. This is the clarification that everybody needed, the masculine and the feminine, the Aries and Libra, full moon, super full moon on the ninth solar tone. This is a very big deal. And then, you know, the 22nd gene key being activated by Neptune on April 2nd from 2019 to 2022 is also an extremely big deal. So I just wanted to come on and share with you. And Greg was so loving to have me come on the platform and share and integrate our, our thoughts, our opinions and our uh -huh. Everything. And this all came around from yesterday when yeah. Facebook come, uh, went down, basically, uh, w where people were unable to update their status. Right. Carrie contacted me, and this is how we're going to wrap it all up in the end. This is all part of the purging. It is. It's, it's reflective of the purging that's yeah. going on. So what Facebook is doing is they're purging all of our life logs that, that's been recorded uh, through their program and what was actually called LifeLog through the DARPA program ran by the CIA. Uh, so this is, it was supposed to happen actually. It was divinely. Divinely guided. Yeah, this so. The divine working right now. So if you wondered why that's happening and why we, we all have issues posting on our statuses on Facebook and Instagram, that's it and it's all coming around. and. Big days are ahead. This is the purging of the ancestral lineage. And with that purging, make space for your spirit to come in. This is your gifts. All of your gifts are being activated. So just take time. Love yourself. Have compassion for yourself, for your for others and neighbors. Okay? And let go of judgments of yourself, for one. So we're going to leave it off at that right now. Carrie has to go pick up her uh, I got children. My kids. And uh, so one last time. Would okay. you like to give your uh, information? Yeah, if you'd like to um, get, to, if you'd like to talk to me a little bit more, you can reach me on any Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, Corky Cosmo. Again, I'm Carrie Sanders, and thank you for having me. Okay. I appreciate it. I love you all for joining. All the love, all the comments, and we'll, I'm sure Greg's going to be responding to them. I'll be responding to them as much as we can, and just get ready because we're here. This is this is amazing. This is confirmation on so many different levels. Uh -huh. I was hoping we'd get some light language. Oh, yeah. There. Yes, let's tie this up. Let's do an activation. So right. if you've never experienced celestial sound alchemy, oh, sorry, changed it. I have. Okay. Then take a deep breath in and just know that this is going to go beyond the conscious and into the subconscious. It's going to go beyond the mind and into your soul to activate a line and elevate your frequencies. Okay. I call in all my guides, spirit, celestial, mineral, animal, elemental, angelic, and ancestors to be here to assist in this DNA activation and alignment. As a divine sovereign being, I hold this with the highest intent of pure source light energy, and so it is. Ar na hua sake wan ne rukuna hea ke sukuar na haya kuama ya nea siki ka ruk nua se ki arumwa nea se ya ka rukua siki ra nehe arakna se ya si tuaka ki arumwa na yak nea rukua sa si. Sikiasa <laughs> As a divine sovereign being, that is my will, and so it is. 
Thank you. Mm. Well, what's the message? The message is individual for everybody. Okay. It's more of a feeling. Okay. There's more of a feeling in that. Mm -hmm. And to me, I'm just like really elevated in my crown chakra. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm experiencing right now is like loves of light. Nice. So I'm like, my, you tell my eyes are like yeah. super watery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but with, with that, just allow for whatever you feel, maybe tears, maybe twitching, maybe vivid dreams, allow for that to resonate within your energy body, however it shows up. Mm -hmm. And your message is individual. Because there was a lot of different languages in that. Yeah, different tones. Different three, tones. three different tones. I loved it. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it off there. Yes. Um, uh, my name's Greg, obviously, N5D.com. Make sure that you um, like, you subscribe, and share. All right, yeah. Let's I'm, do an ohm right, together. I'm good. And join yeah, with us. Yeah, join us. Let's do an ohm. Okay. Ready? You start it, and I'll Take join. Take a deep breath in to synchronize. <sighs> One more. And... Oh. That is beautiful. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you for joining us. Yes. So until the next time. Sending you all infinite love and light. This is Greg from N5D.com. And Carrie from Quirky Cosmo. Peace.